as a woman going through menopause, you're probably more bothered about your hot flushes and joint pains and body ache and insomnia. But what if I told you it's your vagina that's shrinking and shortening as you go past all of these years as you get older? In this podcast, I'm going to tell you why your vagina is just so important and what you can do to maintain its health. I'm Dr. Neelima Deshpande. I'm a gynecologist, sex therapist, an author and a coach. I've made looking at vaginas a career and a profession. You might say that I'm well qualified to talk about vaginas. In fact, when I spoke at Tallinn at the Speaking Academy, this talk about the vagina was so popular I came to be called That Vagina Lady. So welcome to my podcast, V for Vagina. The vagina is a magical organ. It is truly amazing. When it's flexible and you can stretch and accommodate. In fact, most men and women would probably call it a playground of such. How would you like to learn how to keep your vagina an amazing playground. Keep listening. We'll soon discover different ways of keeping your vaginal health optimal. As a gynecologist and sex therapist, I've made a profession out of looking at vaginas. And I must say that women don't often look after their vaginas. You can sometimes think of the vagina as a kind of a machine. Though it doesn't have any metal parts, there's no hard parts in it. But just like a machine, it needs regular use, it needs oiling, it needs somebody to look after it and keep attention and fix things when they don't go right. In the same way, your vagina needs some maintenance, it needs looking after. I've seen thousands of vaginas in my career as a gynecologist and it really hurts me to see vaginas that are not looked after properly. In my clinic, I've seen women, maybe an 85-year-old lady, struggling to get on top of the gynae couch. And I get a whiff of the stench of urine, sometimes faces. And as I look at the skin that's so dry, soiled, damaged by urine, sometimes bits of tissue paper sticking around the anus where there's faces, and even though part of me is repulsed, a part of me feels so sad. This is not necessary. This need not have happened. A little bit of care can go a long way in making sure you don't suffer like this 85-year-old. And what about that 60-year-old lady? A close friend of mine, his, his mother-in-law and his mother, both diagnosed at the same time with cancer of the cervix. The vaginas, so tight that I couldn't even put a speculum in. And those of you women who are listening right now, and who've been examined, know how painful it can be to have a doctor put that cold metal instrument inside you. And most doctors don't realize that women don't go to gynecologists unless they absolutely have to. How many women and how many friends do you know who've never seen a gynecologist after they had their babies? They don't have any kind of vaginal maintenance program. You know, I think more families have got fridge maintenance contracts and water purifier maintenance contracts, but they don't have a vagina maintenance contract. <laughs> oh dear, those two women had cancer of the cervix. And the only reason they have stage 3 cancer of the cervix is because they were too afraid to go to a gynecologist to have a speculum examination and a pap smear because their vaginas had become short and shrunken, and it was painful. For you, I hear you say, but I'm menopausal, I've got hot flushes, body ache, why should I be bothered about my vagina? My mood is irritable, I can't sleep at night, I'm depressed, I have teenage kids who've got their needs. My menopausal status has made me an outcast. I'm fast joining that group of women who are invisible to society. And this body, 
oh my God, this body is treacherous. And I can't tell anybody about it. My hair is falling out. I see bald patches. I'm sweating. My nose doesn't smell the same things the same way. My eyesight's changing. My eyelids are drooping. I've got wrinkles on my face. It doesn't matter how many face yoga exercises I do, those muscles just don't lift up. My taste buds, what I used to enjoy before just doesn't seem so tasty. And my teeth are falling out. My mouth burns. My skin is not sensitive. Sometimes I feel like there's insects crawling underneath my skin. Previously, the parts of my body I used to enjoy being touched. Just, you know, they just don't feel the same anymore. It doesn't respond. My erogenous zones are not erogenous anymore. They are irritating. Get off me! Stop touching me! I have no libido. I have no desire. And this mental looping of negative thoughts, everything that you did wrong, I just remember that every time you touch me. <gasps> That's why it's called the men no pause. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Then the vagina whispers. I'm dry. It's painful. It hurts to pee. And sex. Oh my God. It feels like shards of glass are tearing through the skin. It burns and stings. Sometimes I have trouble sitting because it's so sensitive. The vagina says. Give me some moisture, some lubrication. A little bit of estrogen will go such a long way. Use me. Exercise me. Just focus on some more pelvic floor exercises. Get some blood flowing through me. Just have sex. Once a week. Every other week. Oh, keep me occupied. Work me. Let me stretch. Let me accommodate. And what about some orgasms? Amazing orgasms that you can rehearse and practice on demand. A resetting of your hormone balance in menopause. Better lubrication, better rugosity, better thickness. And those pelvic floor muscles pumping blood to me. And relearning that I can fall in love with how my vagina feels all over again. Maybe. Just maybe. Try a vibrator. Ah, those amazing toys. And we are so lucky. Did you know you've even got toys with artificial intelligence now? They can teach you how to have better orgasms. Surely if a machine can teach you how to have orgasms, you can have them too. You can learn. And soon the vagina can start to smile again and become that amazing playground that you've always known it to be. And incontinence and cancers. And pain and discomfort need never be a part of your history. And that's why every woman over 50 deserves to have great sex. The vagina is such an integral part of being female, of being a woman, if you identify as a woman, right from the time you're a baby until you're old. I want to cover as many different topics relating to the vagina as I can in this podcast. Because I'm really, really passionate about women looking after their vaginas and investing some time to maintaining the health of their vaginas. Because it is so crucial to how we age and the quality of our lives as we age. Just to give you a hint of the topics coming up, I'll be talking about orgasms, talking about painful sex. I'll be talking about vaginal infections and sexually transmitted diseases, how condoms are useful, what kind of lubricants to use, and sex toys. And much, much more. If you've got friends, family, women and men who you think would benefit from listening to this, do share and subscribe. And I look forward to interacting with you. You can get in touch with me through my Instagram channel, send me a message, or on Facebook, on Messenger. Remember to like, subscribe and share this podcast with whoever you think needs to hear it. If you'd like to talk to me one-on-one for a personal consultation, get in touch with me via my website, www.drdr, 
Nilima, N double E L I M A, Deshpande, D E S H P A N D E dot com. And you'll find a button there where you can click and book a slot with me. And I'll be sure to respond to any of your queries. Thank you. Disclaimer This podcast is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's or listener's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment.